Hey, this is Professor Perez from Saddleback College. Today we're going to do an introduction to decimals. Now this will be a two-part presentation. Now of course we can't get started without our student of the semester, and that's Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey Charlie, you ready to go? Yeah. We're doing decimals today, an introduction. Here we go, right there. Okay Charlie, on the first day of class we discussed digits and place value. There was our digits and we put this number up and we defined a pattern that exists when you look at place value. Now here it is, again, ones, tens, hundreds, one thousand, ten thousands, hundred thousands, one millionths, ten millionths, hundred millionths, one billionths, ten billionths, hundred billionths, and we bring it home with one trillion. So very nice. Now, you asked me a question on that first day, what about the decimal? Well, here we go. If you remember, we had said that everything appears to mirror off that ones place. Watch. The pattern will exist, but it goes in reverse. Just like this. Ones, tenths, hundreds. One thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. One millionths, ten millionths, hundred millionths. One billionths, ten billionths, hundred billionths. So remember, we're going to look at place values of decimal numbers so we can read them correctly. So here we go, Charlie, right there. 0 0.07. Well, that's how most people say it. But how do we say this as a word statement? Well, we first define the place value of that seven digit. Ones, tenths, hundreds. There we go. So our sevenths it is in the hundredths place. And therefore, how many hundreds do we have, Charlie? Seven. That's right. Now, how do we write this as a fraction? Well, it's seven over 100. There you go. And there's a decimal written as a fraction. It is said seven hundredths. Let's do another one. Here we go, Charlie. 0 0.18. If we're going to read that correctly as a word statement, let's define the place value. Ones, tens, hundredths, right? And the eight is in the hundredths place. How many hundredths do we have, Charlie? Eighteen. Eighteen. We have eighteen hundredths. And as a fraction, it's eighteen over a hundred. Now, you could reduce that fraction to nine over fifty if you'd like, but right now, we're just trying to write the decimals as a fraction whose denominator is a power of ten, right? Because decimals are fractions whose denominators are powers of 10. 100 is 10 squared. We'll talk more about that later, too. Okay, Charlie, we're having so much fun. Let's do another one. All right, don't get scared. Now, how do you read this one? You don't want to say point oh 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 eight, right? You got to find the place value. So here we go. Ones, tenths, hundredths, one thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, one millionths. Don't get scared, Charlie. Now, the eight is in the one millionths, so how many one millionths do we have, Charlie? Eight. Very nice there. And now that you can say it properly as a word statement, we can easily write the fraction. It's eight over one million. There we go. Let's do another one now. Here we go. 0 0.00201. Well, what number is that? Let's start by finding the place value of our furthest digit to the right. Ones, tenths, hundreds, one thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. There we go. And so we see that one is in the hundred thousandths. How many hundred thousandths do we have, Charlie? 201. Very nice. 201 hundred thousandths. And so to write this as a fraction, notice we just put 201 over 100,000. There you go. And of course, if you have a calculator, and you take 201 and divide by 100,000, you're obviously going to get that 0 0.00201 because that's 201 hundred thousandths. All right, Charlie, let's do another one. Now, 4.023, Charlie. This is actually a mixed number. It's a whole number with a decimal. So let's define our place values, the fours and the ones, and then we have the tenths, hundredths, one thousandths. And so notice that three is in the one thousandths, Charlie. But first, we have a whole number that's a four. So we'll put that down, four, 
and now here's where we're using the word and because we have a mixed number. We have four and what, Charlie? 23 one thousand. 23 one thousands, that's right. Now let's write the number as a mixed number. Watch. Four and 23 one thousands. There it is. There is the mixed number notation for that decimal up there. Whew. Let's do one more, Charlie. 3.0250. Notice there's a zero at the end of the decimal. Well, some people have asked me, do we need to put that zero there? Well, not putting the zero there or removing it really is not going to change the actual value of the number. But we're going to get into something called significant figures. This number right here is given to the nearest ten thousands. So you were asked to give a decimal representation of some number rounded to the nearest ten thousands. So we're going to translate just as the decimal number is given. You can talk more about significant figures with your facilitator, your tutor, your teacher, or your parents, right? Okay. So here we go, Charlie. We have the ones, tenths, hundreds, one thousands, ten thousands. So that zero is in the ten thousands place. So we have a whole number, Charlie. What is it? Three. Three. So we have three and what, Charlie? 250. 250 ten thousands. Very nice. Now let's write this in its mixed number notation. Three and 250 over ten thousands. Very nice there, Charlie. Whew, that was a good warm up for part two. Anyway, we'll see you again soon.